to up in efforts from the ice. Man, got in late last night from Missouri about midnight. Hopefully you can hear over our uh, sleds dragging right now. If not, that's cool too. Probably don't want to hear my voice anyway, but uh, out here with the gummy worm guy, Ethan, once again. And he's taking me to a little fire hole. We're at an inner city lake today. It's probably a scenario a lot of you guys are faced with. These uh, 100 or so acre inner city lakes. Uh, but he's on them. He said he's on the big bass, walleye, crappie, bluegill. So uh, hopefully catch some tanks. We're, uh, we're pretty stoked. Today it's actually supposed to be like 60 degrees for a high. So it's about 30 degrees right now in the morning. Wind's blowing a little bit. But it's gonna be toasty today. We're gonna be out here in shorts, t-shirts, naked, who knows? But uh, super jet to get started. Bad ice, good ice. Oh yeah, it's like thicker than it looks too. The ice is so clear. This video is gonna be dirty. There we go, set up. First fish of the day, you can see them on the screen waiting for us. Gotta get down there. There we go. Oh, nice little gill. All right, on the board. First drop, first hole. There's still fish down there. Here we are again. You guys already know what it is. Teardrop wax worm. We'll have to mix it up a little bit. See if we can catch something bigger. There goes my bluegill. Back in the hole. Bye, buddy. There we go. Oh, that feels bigger. Oh, it's a bass. Hooked up with a bass. Sick, man. Yes. Sweet, dude. Nice. Large head right in the roof all right ethan wasn't kidding there's uh, a couple fish in this lake that's not a bad one at all that's a two pounder about a 15 inch or so sick first hole boom ethan on the board with a uh, slabby sexy gill that's a good one for sure man man this lake is fire lake hashtag fire lake oh my uh, camera was off Oh, hey guys, I just caught a big crappie. My camera was off though. I know this YouTube thing is my job, but I don't like to turn my camera on very often. But uh, three fish, three species. That's insane. Same hole. Another one on the screen. He's on it. And I got him. Come here, brah. Fat little blue gal man ice fishing does not suck especially when it's 60 degrees outside and it, we don't have the polar vortex rolling in like it's supposed to later on today what's up buddy ah uh, be doing that i was gonna say you are aggressive you little prick not that little man the quality here today is fantastic you got a gill another awesome gillian so much perp got that perp look at the gill plate on that thing that is insane we've been here for about uh, 15 minutes and we already freaking got three different species bass crappie and bluegill and it's good quality ones not giant bass but definitely super super fun through the ice now this lake does have walleye too so if we're really really lucky it's kind of a rare occurrence it sounds like uh, ethan's been out here quite a bit he says you usually only get like one sighting uh, per day of the walters but uh, we're just gonna kinda keep moving around, jigging around this area, see what we can make happen. Wasn't planning on keeping the bluegill and the crappie today, but uh, we're starting to catch some really, really solid fish. So uh, we might keep a couple, clean them up, eat them up later tonight. So far, awesome day on the water. And the great thing is it's, uh, it's, it's early and it's already warm. It's like 45 degrees, so it's gonna be a nice day. Time to find out. Feels like a little guy. Not that little, but another bluegill. Just had a little drought without a fish. Now we got one. Okay, tip up, deployed with the minnow. Back to my hole. It's uh, about 13 feet deep. Those are all fish. That ain't no pile of brush or nothing. Sweet. Oh, that's a better fish for sure. Oh, look at that. A little ice bass. Would that be your PB probably? Yeah. Sweet, man. Well, sorry I caught him. All right the not so graceful land job dude go away go away there it goes oh yeah that feels like a bass
What the? Oh, it's a walleye! Oh. Yeah. Oh, no! Oh, dude, it was like an 18. He got stuck on the bottom of the hole. No. I can't freaking believe I just lost that. Those fish are like so rare here in Nebraska. I just played them a little too long, I think. That was my first walleye of the season. And probably won't happen again. I just didn't, he got leverage on the bottom of the hole. Fucking bluegill. He was mixed right in with the bluegill. Piss. His head just would not come through the hole. He just kept T-boning it over and over. There's so many fish right here, dude. Ah, uh, no, you did. This is bigger too. That's a bass. All right, I'm starting to feel a little bit better. Definitely not as, as cool a catch as that walleye would have been, but uh, on the board with another nice bass fish and there's a bunch more down there. It's like that walleye was swimming with the group of bass. Look at the coloration on that fish. <sighs> I'm still like torn up about that walleye though. Of course, that was the only fish I've lost today. That's how that goes, right? Sitting there with it in his mouth. That's a bass too. Ooh, big old crappie. That's a slaunch, dude. Look at that. Just double. Doubled up. Crappie. Bass. All right. That's what I got. This lake doesn't suck. Look at you. Ethan just switched up to the old rattling bait. Sick, man. All right, I think we found the right depth zone. Shoot. There we go. That's bigger. Probably a bass, but I don't want to risk it. Oh, man. I have not seen him. Ooh, it's, it's a bass, I'm pretty sure. It's not huge. Fighter. Pretty good one. Another bass. Ice bass, can't hate it. Another 15 plus, man. They're getting bigger. They are growing. That one crushed it. Oh, walleye. Oh, no! F it's another walleye. Okay. Yeah, same thing. <sighs> Two fish I fing lost are walleye. I have now lost not only one, but two freaking walleye. I am like heated right now. I just told Ethan I am I'm leaving if I lose another walleye. This is unbelievable. I've lost two fish today total out of like catching 30 and both were freaking walleye. I know you guys might say, oh, you got a ton of walleye. You can catch walleye wherever. And you, I know if you're from the north, you got a lot of, well, we don't got a lot of walleye around here. So that is just pissing me off. I don't even know if I've caught a walleye through the ice. I was thinking about it. <sighs> Super frustrating, but we're gonna keep fishing. We got a couple more hours and uh, hopefully, hopefully we can make one of these happen. What are you? Another bass. These things are fun through the ice, man. Another beautiful jigging ice bass. You cannot hate that, man. Not a giant, but on this light tackle, little jigs. Freaking sick. Woo! Go down, go down. This guy's out of his mind. There he goes. There we go. There we go. That's better fish. Come on, be a walleye. Peck her head. I'm like, turn up now, man. It's Ethan's hooked up with a donkey. Come on, big Walter, big bass. Oh man, head shakes, head shakes are us. I like head shakes. I think that's a bass. I don't know if it's a bass. Not a bad one, dude, that's a solid bass for sure. I feel like a pro when I kneel down when I do it. Yeah. The professional ice fisherman, if you will. Maybe I can get sponsored by Clam Outdoors. There, there we go. There we go. Please be a walleye. Please be a walleye. Ah, it's a bass. That's okay though. 
sick. Another bass. Another bass, another dollar. <laughs> Dude, what the hell? Bass. So my camera's wet now. Come here, buddy. Oh, big old gill. Damn. That's a good one. Whew. Oh, hey, the tip up's up. <laughs> the tip up's up. Oh, it's moving. Yep. Yep. Got one. Please be a Walter. Please be a Walter. And it's the smallest bass in North America. <laughs> I don't know why I was that excited. There's a freaking million bass in here. It's hard to tell when you got anything else. There we go. Whew. That's a big one. Big old bluegill. Man, this lake's got a lot of good bluegill in it. It's how I got this way. this way Karma's a dangerous game Cash out when I'm on top Forgive me, give me It's how I got this way Karma's a dangerous game Cash out when I'm on top Forgive me, give me I was born on the wrong side of karma So naturally I have a lot of punishment to dish out well guys, that was a, uh, a totally badass time in the water. It was like non-stop action so much so that I probably didn't even get any real decent solid footage for you guys of uh, actual catching, but I was just like fish catch, fish catch, fish catch. You know, there wasn't really a whole lot to it. The first spot we drilled down, there was fish, and as soon as they left, we'd go drill a new hole and we'd catch them right there as well. As you can see, I've got several fish uh, to fillet up back at home, and a lot of people have actually been requesting uh, for a little quick tutorial on how to fillet bluegill and crappie, and so I'm gonna just go home, take these home. Obviously, I gotta clean them, so I think that's a good opportunity for me to show you guys really quick how to fillet bluegill and crappie and really it's a method you can use it on uh, any type of fish uh, but especially pan fish there's been a ton of questions lately so catch you guys at the house what's up dudes back at the casa let's get these bad boys filleted up all right so i know a lot of you guys already know how to do this and a lot of you guys have seen me do this a ton of times so i'm gonna keep this short and simple so obviously we got a bluegill here i, I really like these boards like this because you can clamp their mouth in it makes it a completely different process super super easy and of course an electric fillet knife um, helps a ton. If you don't have one, I suggest strongly that you go out and get one. They're not super expensive, uh, but they'll help your hand from cramping up. Plus, they stay sharp a lot longer because they're serrated. It's just, trust me, it's a lot easier process. So I clamp the bluegill in there. I like to start with their back facing me like this. And I'll come in here and I'll make a completely perpendicular to the side of the fish. Um, we'll call it probably a quarter inch back from this little gill right there. We're just going to make our first slice. We're going to take it all the way down right to the spine. We don't want to go through that spine. That's going to be super important throughout this whole process. So boom, that's step number one. We got that done. Now the, the next part is, is just a feel thing. You're going to get better with it over time. It's hard for me to explain straight up how to do, but basically you want this knife pressed down against the spine of the fish all the way back to the tail. You don't want to cut it off when we get there and you'll see that in just a second. Basically it's the fine line of pressing these knife blades against that spine to get the most meat possible without going through the spine and wrecking the fish. So we'll just kind of, we'll go down the fish, we'll feel where that is right there. That's right where it's at. And we're just going to ride it the whole way down the side of the fish, pressing down. Now we're going to press down uh, to almost bend the blades like this to keep it pressed down against that fish's spine to get the most meat possible. But you don't want the angle of the knife going down too much. It's going to go through the, uh, the spine. So that's how I like to do it. We're going to take it all the way to we're about a quarter of an inch from where it's going to bust through that skin. Flop them over and we're going to start as quick as we can back towards the tail. And once again, we're going to press down with our knife to kind of flex it that way and have it ride that, that skin the whole way back. So uh, with, with any, any fish with scales, you don't need to scale them. You can actually just you do just like this, ride that knife along that skin, and you'll end up with the most amount of meat possible. So we just got to remove this rib cage and then we'll be done. All we got to do is get this cut right below the edge of the rib. Just like how you press down against that spine, you're going to lift up against that rib cage to get the most amount of meat possible. And then just kind of feel it out, see if there's any ribs. There is one or two more right there. Boom, that's not a huge piece right there. That's not a giant filet, 
but bluegill fresh caught on the ice like this are absolutely delicious. So freaking good. Well, that's it, guys. That is the end of the video today. Like I said, I was kind of disappointed I didn't get more camera angles and, and stuff, but it was just a, a fish catching us day. We whacked them. We, we absolutely caught fish the entire time for like four hours. We were out there. Super, super disappointed in my fish landing abilities, though. Of those two walleye, I don't know. They just both just perfectly got T-boned at the bottom of the hole, and, and that little teardrop popped out. Of course, those were like the only two fish I lost the entire day super super frustrating but what can you do that's fishing and now i really 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 want to catch a walleye through the ice like i was saying up north you got a whole bunch of those up there in, in minnesota wisconsin and canada and stuff but we don't have a whole lot down here um so that was a uh, that was a bummer that was a tough go but it's just gonna give me more motivation to get out there and do it again so if you like this video of course go drop a thumbs up right now and leave a comment down below of course subscribe to melican fishing if you like these ice fishing videos we got several more coming in the next few days and then i'm getting out of town to a warmer climate and some giant g -g 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 giant bass but as always thank you guys for watching i am out of here peace i'm not sorry i can't help this love like mine <laughs> <laughs> i'm not sorry i can't stop with a love like mine